I believe uh, the clerk has um, a note in regards to um, online meetings. Thank you, Councillor Downey. So I'm going to provide a very short protocol for electronic meeting participation and then take roll call. So as a reminder, recorded votes are not allowed in committee meetings. The committee chair or I will call for any objections. If you have an objection, please unmute your microphone, indicate your name and objection. If no objections are stated, the motion will be deemed to be approved. Members participating electronically that need to leave the meeting, please send an email to council at peelregion.ca. If you leave the meeting, you will be marked absent for any votes thereafter. If you would like to request to speak, please raise your hand in WebEx or send an email to council at peelregion.ca. For a full view of the presentation slides, please ensure that you, your, your layout is on focus or stage view. I will now proceed to roll call. Citizen member Awuni. Citizen member Aruni. Teresa. Okay, Councillor Demarla. Yeah, right. I'm here. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Councillor Demarla. Present. Thank you. C Citizen member Dio is absent due to a personal matter. Councillor Dillon. Councillor Dillon. Okay, Councillor Downey is chairing, participating. Regional Chair Unica is present in chambers. Councillor Kovac. Good morning, I'm here, thank you. Thank you. Councillor McFadden. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Citizen Member Roquera. Citizen Member Roquera. And Councillor Santos? Present. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Chair Downey. Thank you, Harjeet. Um, any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none, Councillor McFadden, will you um, move approval of the agenda? Absolutely. Thank you. I can't see hands, so um, Councillor Kovac can second. And moving on to delegations, item 4.1. Uh, welcome to Ron Bennett, artist, Colorful Canadian Memories, regarding request to name a municipal holiday to commemorate the passage of First Act Against Slavery. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to discuss naming the civic holiday in August, Chloe and John Day. Well, who are Chloe and John? Most of us are familiar with John Graves Simcoe, Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada and the founder of the city of Toronto. So who was Chloe? Chloe was a slave. In March, 1793, her owner had sold her to a buyer in New York. She didn't want to leave Canada, so she fought. She fought so hard, three men had to hold her down and tie her up to throw her into a boat and row her across the river to be turned over to her new owner. But Chloe's mistreatment inspired others to act. Peter Martin and William Grizzly were witnesses. They heard her screams and saw her struggle. They reported her mistreatment to Lieutenant Governor Simcoe and the Executive Council of Upper Canada. Attorney General John White was instructed to lay charges. But Chloe's owner had broken no laws and the charges had to be dropped was used as an example of the injustice faced by slaves and the unsavory nature of slavery to introduce a bill to the House of Assembly. And in July, 1793, the act to limit slavery in Upper Canada was given royal assent by Lieutenant Governor Simcoe and became law. This was the first anti-slavery law in the British Empire, an event from Ontario's past worthy of commemorating and an act from Lieutenant Governor Simcoe's career worthy of remembering. Why, why include Chloe in the name then? Because it was her fighting spirit that inspired everyone. And today she is virtually forgotten. Let us make sure she is remembered forever and known by everyone. But there are more reasons to name this holiday Chloe and John Day. Prior to becoming Lieutenant Governor, 
John Simcoe was an abolitionist. He personally did not believe in slavery. He had strength in his convictions to argue for the passage of this bill. About half the House of Assembly were slave owners. These are his co-workers, his friends, his business partners, his peers. It was not Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Simcoe that argued for this law, it was John. It was John's courage to face his peers and argue to make this law reality. By using both names, we remember there were other people involved, and we remember their courage, such as the witnesses. Peter Martin was a free black man who had served in the military and fought in the American Revolutionary War with Chloe's owner. Most of us have never served, but the phrase band of brothers is not merely an expression for soldiers. It refers to a bond forged in battle that is stronger than family. Peter Martin had to break that bond to testify. We'll never know the courage it took for him to come forward. William Grizzly was a white man, an employee of Chloe's owner. He had to risk and most likely lose his job to do what he believed was right. Using both names will remind us it was black and white people working together that made this law reality and made our province a better place to live. Let us use Chloe and John Day to remind us that in our current struggle against racism, we must all work together. Black, white, Indian, Asian, all races, all must reach out to each other, embrace our shared humanity. Naming this holiday is a provincial mandate. I request the support and assistance of Peel Regional Council to draft a letter urging the province, the provincial government, to rename the civic holiday in August, to give this holiday more meaning than just a day off work. It will become an important history lesson, a history lesson that teaches us about some of the most courageous people who have lived in our province, at a time when black and white working together made our province a world leader in the fight against slavery. Rename this holiday when we have a constant reminder that by working together today, we can make racism part of our past. Councillors, when you return to your city councils, I implore you, take this torch with you, hold it high, use it to enlighten and educate. When there's an opportunity to name a street, a park, or any public work. Remember these people. Remember their courage. Remember when our ancestors worked together. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Bennett, and thank you for your fantastic storytelling ability. It was a great way to start the meeting and a good reminder as to why we're here. Um, I Hold on, I just have to check my... I have see Councillor McFadden has her hand up. Um, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I, I really appreciated the insight. Um, I would ask that uh, the committee refer this back to staff. Uh, we do have a policy uh, with the region and all of our cities about uh, naming streets and monuments. So I would suggest that. And we absolutely have no jurisdiction whatsoever at the regional level. Uh, for uh, naming holidays, but I don't see a problem, Madam Chair, in us writing a letter on their behalf uh, to the province. I think that that would at least uh, help them with their cause. Thank you, Councillor McFadden. Um, if I, I would just like to refer to clerks in terms of uh, a referral and then a communication. Uh, do we need to split those two things? No, we don't need to split them. It can be all in one? Yes. Okay, thank you. So moved by, do you, sorry, do you need a moment to put that wording together? No, we can take it as received. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do with that. Moved by Councillor McFadden, second by Councillor DeMurla. All in favor? I'm seeing, yes. seeing none opposed. That carries. Thank you very much again, Mr. Bennett, for your presentation and uh, your insight this morning. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak. Moving on to item 4.2.
Shelley Salakis, Community Development Coordinator, and Rachel Pennington, Public Art Curator, City of Mississauga, presenting the City of Mississauga's 2020 and 2021 response to regional funding for visible, visible expressions of pride. Thank you for the opportunity this morning to share with you Mississauga's response and our approach to the Regional Resolution 2019-17 Physical Demonstrations of Pride. My name is Shelley Salakis. I'm a Community Development Coordinator in the Recreation Division, and I'm here today with my colleague from Culture, Public Art Curator Rachel Pennington. Good morning. Good morning. As a city, we do acknowledge and mark pride, but I think we all it goes without saying that we feel that more could be done. We also wanted to recognize the region's commitment to this annual funding as a very important resource that will help us continue to mobilize the community around their ideas. Next slide, please. As we know, nothing was business as usual in 2020. And in a year when we didn't have the same opportunity to interact with the community, we wanted to continue to be open to informal dialogue. Luckily, we were able to be a part of a series called Your Voice as part of Mississauga Pride. It was an opportunity to have facilitated conversation with the community. We heard lots of great ideas and had some great dialogue. More importantly, it allowed us to test the meaningfulness of our project and assess what was the best way for us to move forward so that we could be successful. I don't want to overstate the public engagement that was done, but we did hear overwhelming that Rainbow Crosswalks is a very important physical expression of pride. It was also noted that as a large city, we have yet to install a Rainbow Crosswalk, be it temporary or permanent. After intern after additional internal dialogue, we decided that public art had the process and structure to allow us to respond best to this opportunity, including opportunities for further engagement with the community. Our approach also included developing a core working team. This was a critical step for this project as it allowed for early cross-departmental support and buy-in, helped us flush out additional project constraints and considerations, it helps us make sure that the right people are part of the conversation and that we continue to have meaningful dialogue. As well, taking a public art approach allowed us to consider alignment with other projects. A report outlining our approach was endorsed by Mississauga's Diversity and Inclusion Committee, as well as the City Council in September. Once we received that support, we moved on to the implementation of our public art process. I will pass the mic over to Rachel and she will share with you the public art piece. Yes, you can go to the next slide. Um, so when we looked at precedents for artist designed crosswalks, uh, we felt that the scope and budget for a project of this type uh, would require the city to utilize the region funding allocation from both 2020 and 2021. And this was really in order to accommodate the costs for uh, durable asphalt paints and ongoing maintenance, as well as meaningful community engagement. Um, so we felt that part of the budget should go towards um, the artist working with community. So we divided the project into two stages, uh, with 2021, um, the budget being devoted to the artist fees for design and community engagement, and in 2021, the budget being uh, used for installation and materials. Um, so last year, we issued a call to artists. It was open only to professional artists who self-identified as 2SLGBTQ+, and we had an entirely 2SLGBTQ+, art selection committee um, consisting of queer professional artists and community organizers um, to evaluate the submissions and select an artist that they felt uh, was best suited for this opportunity. Um, so what the artist is now uh, proceeding with is going to be uh, engaging uh, Mississauga's to its LGBTQ plus community through virtual events um, that are really designed to help foster a sense of uh, belonging and ownership over the artwork. 
Um, we're also working with the artist as well as our internal uh, teams to select a final location. This is something that we will be going to community for to hear their input on. And then uh, the whole mural will be installed during Pride 2021. Um, so if you go to the next slide, you'll see uh, this is the uh, concept for the for the artwork. The selected artist is Vivian Rosas. Um, this is not the final by any means, but um, kind of what she uh, has proposed and, and the direction she's taking with this. Um, so I'll just read her statement here because I think she said it best. As a queer BIPOC artist, I have been waiting to find a piece of public art that truly represents and makes me and my community feel seen and celebrated. Folks of the Tuis LGBTQ plus community come in all shapes and sizes and backgrounds and are steeped in a rich culture of creative communities finding joy through dance. Dance and club spaces have always been those magical spaces where a lot of the Tuis LGBTQ plus community have been able to come together to share spaces that are safe and where they can fully let go and feel like their true selves without fear of judgment. My concept was inspired by the joys of coming together as one, dancing and showing off what you are. Um, so uh, this is the the concept for the artwork, um, and uh, keep in touch with uh, the city's public art program because we will be announcing um, these virtual events uh, soon. Um, next slide, and, and Shelley, it's back to you. Yeah, and we still have a lot of work ahead of us, but we're pretty excited about this project and our approach to the funding. We hope that some of you will be able to join us to mark this occasion during Pride this year. Hopefully it will be, in fact, in person and not virtually. Uh, but uh, And we've included our direct contact information if you want to reach out to us for any particular reason. And that concludes our project update for you folks. Thank you, Shelley and Rachel, for your presentation. Um, just referring to the speaker's board. Um, I will just tell you a story. Um, I printed my, my uh, agenda with your report in it, and um, that last visual that is in the concept sketch, um, uh, not final, uh, with the dancers, my daughter actually already took it. She took it out of my agenda because she really liked it and put it up on her bulletin board in her room. So um, I'll, I'll be excited to see the final version. I thought it was quite nice. That's so nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Uh, seeing no one on the board, um, I, I did have, uh, you mentioned um, the dates, and I'm wondering if, if we could kind of, if we could turn to staff and um, just uh, maybe have a conversation about um, our alignment with when we celebrate Pride and when kind of the rest of the GTHA uh, celebrates Pride, and maybe if that's something that we could look at seeking some alignment moving forward. I'll pass it over to Juliet. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, for the comment about the dates. There has been a lot of confusion uh, historically because Peel Pride um, is observed in July rather than June, where the GTA uh, tends to celebrate Pride in June. Um, and this was a decision that was made um, by the uh, Peel Pride Committee, um, which I believe now has been um, dismantled, um, and there has been further discussion about potentially re revisiting um, this decision. And I think that there is an opportunity for us to uh, make a recommendation um, to align uh, Pride in Peel with the GTA so that we are celebrating it um, at the same time rather than having a separate date. So there is opportunity. Thank you for that. I know it's just a bit of, it's a it's a, just a side to this presentation, but I just wanted to acknowledge that and maybe something that we can look at. Um, can I bring forward um, the report um, to be moved um, on receipt with the presentation? Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, Councillor McFadden? Every, okay. Do we have any other speakers to the presentation or questions of our presenters? And just a There's reminder. No one else on the board. Okay, I was going to say if I, it's um, just working off one screen. I can't always um, see hands up. So please, if you uh, have 
a comment or question, please um, uh, interject. Um, Councillor Downey, just to clarify, would you like to have staff report back or would you like to move that we put that recommendation on the floor now to change it? I think we can move the recommendation on the floor. I'm getting nodding. Okay, Council so that would be that they're the only one with her camera on, so she's, <laughs> she, she's the, the conference here. So the motion on the floor is that the Region of Peel's recognition of Pride Month be moved from July to June to be in alignment with the GTA. Correct. So we and just then, need someone um, to move that. Okay. Uh, Councillor McFadden, seconded by Councillor DeMurla. Any opposed? Seeing none, it carries. And then um, do we need to bring forward, you know, we can just go through it, it's fine. Um, uh, or did you, did you, I didn't bring forward that, um, the report, the visible demonstrations of pride and peel. So we can go through it after the next one. Um, moving on to item 5.1, the region of reports, uh, region appeal indigenous land acknowledgement uh, report for information. Are there any questions or comments on that report? Chair Unique is on the board. Go ahead, Chair. Th thank you very much, Chair Downey. Um, yeah, I mean, recall um, as we did our Indigenous land acknowledgement, we were advised by, I guess, some groups that perhaps the term Huron Wendat or just Huron was pejorative, which was news to me. Uh, and so I'm glad we did the analysis, but in a remarkable irony, one of the great leaders of the Huron-Wendat community just passed away. And I don't know if any of you read the, and I feel so terrible, I didn't bring it to council and acknowledge the gentleman, but what an individual he was in the lands closer to the Quebec border, but um, an artist, a prize fighter, an entrepreneur, and they kept referencing him as this incredible individual who was their leader at one point, I don't think he was towards the end, of the Huron-Wendat here, and they, and I was saying, funny, we, we were sort of taken aside and said, you can't call them that, but then the organization that, that he's from called him that, so I, I put that aside knowing that the report was coming, so it's all, always our intention to be inclusionary and respectful, and so uh, nice to see that we ran this through the system and got it right, but, but a real verification of it that, as I say, one of their grand elders just passed away. Isn't this terrible that I don't remember his name? Um, but a, just a glowing tribute to an amazing gentleman and a very varied life that he lived, and, and his own peoples, and they're all our peoples, uh, refer to him as the leader of the Huron Wendat. So I I'm, I'm even feel more confident now that, that it's appropriate, and so we will carry on accordingly, and I'm grateful for the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, seeing no other speakers, just um, one question comment that I have in regards to, um, uh, you know, how Indigenous land acknowledgement is delivered. Um, and I know uh, Chair Unique and I have had this conversation many times that often um, the acknowledgement can be seen as tokenism um, when not delivered with genuine intent. And I wonder beyond delivering and, and beyond this committee, are there things that could be said or uh, expressed during that acknowledgement that would um, uh, uh, underline our, the sincere intent as the acknowledgement is being made? Oh, and I see another hand up now that I've, I've spoken. Um, so stat, I'll go to Mayor Thompson and maybe we can uh, continue that discussion. Mayor Thompson. Councillor Downey, thank you for bringing that forward. And I have to tell you uh, with Caledon, uh, we have uh, met with the Mississaugas of the credit. And one thing that's very important to them is a wampum belt. And uh, we've renewed that every year with Caledon Day. Uh, meeting with uh, Stacy LaForme, who is the chief for the Mississaugas of the Credit. And this is something that is ex extremely important. That's their treaty or agreement to acknowledge that we acknowledge them and that we continue to be the stewards of the land. And I think it would be a really good move that the region appeal and uh, basically Brampton, Mississauga do the same. Now, Brampton's very similar. They're part of the Agentis Treaty from Chief Agentis when she was the chief when she made the agreement of Treaty 19, where part of, half of Mississauga is part of that and half of Mississauga is of the original uh, earlier treaty, I think back in the uh, about 14 years earlier. 
So I think that's something that uh, we, we you were saying what we could do. Uh, that is more important to them than anything. The acknowledgement is part of the re uh, reconciliation, but what really means more than that is the acknowledgement and the renewal of the wampum belt is something that's extremely important. And Councillor Downey, as you know, you and I did go down to uh, Hagersville to meet with them there. And uh, this is something that we found uh, that has really created a great um, dialogue that we have between the Mississaugas and herself as the town of Caledon. But I, I encourage the other two municipalities in the region to do the same. I think this is something that we can do that means that we're very serious of what we mean when we do the acknowledgement. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mayor Thompson. I'm wondering um, if there's a member of staff that would like to respond. Yes, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Um, absolutely, thank you for um, bringing that forward, Mayor Thompson. Um, I think that's a, a brilliant um, recommendation and something that we can absolutely bring forward as an opportunity from a regional perspective, but I also agree that the local municipalities uh, should have unity um, in looking at this opportunity as well. And, and I think in general, in terms of going back to your question, um, you know, uh, Councillor Downey, you know, the, the land acknowledgement isn't really about a mechanical process of just reading the words. Um, I've seen it done in many ways where people actually talk of, just talk about the pride they have, ha you know, being able to work and live on this land um, and just acknowledging and respecting the contribution and the history of the original peoples who uh, inhabited it. So it really is about being connected to it and showing respect um, more so than memorizing or reading the words, uh, the verbiage word for word. Thank you, Juliet. I think that um, Chair Unica, you were just given free reign. Oh, thank you. To, um, and to, mod uh, to modify your acknowledgement as you see fit. Thank you. Well, um, ironically, I was going to bring this up under other business, but uh, Madam Chair, and I think the mayor has given me the entree. In reading the agenda over the weekend, first of all, uh, with thanks to Mr. Bennett, the amazing story of Chloe Cooley. I'm very proud of my understanding of Canadian and local history. I didn't know that story. What a remarkable story. And then this report that was in our agenda as well. The thought that I had that I was going to bring up under other business was this. I thought, you know, symbols matter and words matter, but it's not just what you do, it's what you're seen to be doing and genuinely believe. So we have the acknowledgement at the beginning of the meeting, but a thought that crossed my mind that I wanted committee to consider is this. This council chamber that I'm sitting in today is our great meeting room where decisions are made. And I said to myself, why don't we consider naming it as opposed to the council chamber, which is more of a description than a name? And it comes to us from the British, I'm sure, and it's what we know. And it, as I say, it's more a descriptor than it is um, something that, that is regaled, for lack of a better term. And I was wondering, what about the idea of renaming the council chamber an appropriate Native people's name for their great meeting place where they made decisions? And then I looked into that and found out that there is such a name, and some of you may have seen these on some Canadian vignettes. The name is, is, the name is Toronto. And accordingly, from a little bit of research that I did, not Toronto, but Toronto with an N at the end, Toronto, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, was the Huron word for place of meeting. Now, I don't think we're going to name this after Toronto or Toronto, so the confusion might be a, a bit much, but I just thought as a suggestion to rename you know, one of the most significant chambers in the region of Peel, um, all from indigenous lands and the lands of the Mississaugas of the New Credit and the Mississaugas from the forks of the Credit, Caledon, Brampton down to Port Credit and our waterfront, just as a consideration to name our great meeting place where decisions are made, hopefully for the good of all, not just the council chamber that 50,000 other entities and hamlets have in all of Canada, but to consider naming it our place for making decision in the appropriate native or indigenous language. 
Just a thought that I wanted to bring up at the end of the meeting that, um, back to you, Councillor Downey, it's not just what you say and do, but the meaning and the symbolism of something like that, whether that's appropriate or some other thing, but that's what came to my mind over the weekend. I don't know if the clerk or staff might, or anybody else wanted to speak to that, some, not something to be done now, but to take away or someone has a better idea in that regard, but it has a sense of permanence and I think the symbolism is powerful. What do you do? That's where we make our most important decisions and it's the chamber that we inhabit after the indigenous and the natives people who were here before us. Just a thought. Thank you, Chair. I believe uh, Commissioner Lockyer would like to comment. Thank you, and through you, Madam Chair, that is something that we can certainly take back and do a report uh, following the facilities naming policy and bring forward a few suggestions along that, that vein uh, to this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mayor Thompson? Uh, I would encourage uh, the Commissioner to reach out to uh, Stacey Laform, the Chief of Mississaugas. He's also fluent in Haudenosaunee, or Haudenosaunee, uh, say it right, <laughs> uh, language, which is the oldest of the Indigenous languages in this area. So he might have something better or something that we can definitely use, but I would re recommend that we reach out to him. Thank you. Chair, Thank this you is Councillor Damirla. I'd like to say Go something. Ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I think uh, the idea is brought forward both by uh, Count, um, uh, Chair Unique and Mayor Thompson are excellent. But I was just going to suggest, is there a way, and I know uh, Mayor Thompson referenced speaking to uh, Chief Lacey, uh, Tracy Laform uh, on what the exact word would be, but perhaps we could actually, I was wondering if there's a mechanism for us to consult more fulsomely uh, with the First Nations group saying this is the sentiment where we want to go beyond an acknowledgement and move to some meaningful symbolism. Here's two ideas, but do you have a third one? So just the idea that, you know, we've come up with some good intentions, but perhaps uh, we need to t speak to them and see how they feel about these ideas or if they have something else. So if there's a way for staff when they do their report back to do a more fulsome consultation. Very well said, Councillor Demerla, I agree. Um, and I'm sure that uh, staff will take that as direction. Uh, do we have any other comments? Seeing no hands, um, I'll move receipt of the report, moved by Chair Unica, seconded by Mayor Thompson. Uh, any opposed? Seeing none, moving on to item 5.2, visible demonstrations of pride and peel. This report was put forward for information. Um, do we have any comments or questions? Seeing none, moved by Councillor McFadden, seconded by Mayor Thompson. Any opposed? Carries. Uh, our uh, item 6.1 under communications, uh, a letter from Napa and Chohan Advisor, Peel Housing Corporation, uh, regarding call for awareness for India's farmer protests. Uh, receipt recommended. Do I have any speakers to the communication? Seeing none, uh, receipt moved by Councillor McFadden, seconded by Mayor Thompson. Any opposed? Seeing none, uh, other business? Are there any members that have other business? Uh, Councillor Santos. Thank you through you, Madam Chair. I just um, wanted to fully express my enthusiasm and excitement over the inauguration of the first Black South Asian Vice President in the United States of America. Um, I thought it would be appropriate just to publicly acknowledge that on this committee. It, I know that it's in a diff completely different jurisdiction, but certainly resonates here at the region of Peel. I agree, and thank you for noting that. Do we have any other business? Oh, Councillor McFadden, go ahead. Well, actually, while we're acknowledging the first female uh, vice president, we should not forget the um, beautiful rendition by the poet laureate that was done by a 22-year-old 
at the inauguration. It was so moving. It was absolutely beautiful and good for her. I think um, she was eloquent and said exactly what the nation needed to hear. So congratulations to her as well. I couldn't agree more. And I think that probably the most touching thing I saw yesterday during um, the inauguration was, um, if you're following your own social media feeds, was um, a resident of mine who posted a picture of her young daughter um, saying, hey, mom, she looks like me. And I think that was um, like one of the best things. And I know for myself, I have always, uh, you know, taught my daughters um, to put themselves in places, even if they don't think that's, you know, the, the image that fits or, um, or what have you. Sorry, Councillor McFadden. I just have a question. Do you think it would be appropriate for our committee to send both of them a letter of congratulations. Um, we are representing diversity within the region appeal. And I think as a, as a region and as a committee, I think it would be a wonderful gesture to both of them. Absolutely. I support uh, that. To clerks, is that something that we can put together from the region appeal? Yes, we'll put that together. Chair? Do we need to vote on that? No, we don't. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other comments? Questions? Uh, maybe that's, is that something that we'd like to uh, draft and have come back to the committee or can we just um, maybe work on that through Chair Unica's office? Uh, Chair Downey, yourself in the chair Perfect. can work on that letter. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there are no in-camera matters. Uh, our next meeting is Thursday, April 15th. Um, so we will move adjournment. Uh, Councillor McFadden, thank you very much. And thank you everybody for your time this morning and to the presenters for joining us.